Were we all born to run? I get a little bit uh, annoyed when people say that. And, and you never hear of anybody saying that we were all born to run. I hear people say it all the time. And, and, and the people who are saying it are all about the same. They, they look kind of like me. They're skinny. They're healthy. They're running. Okay? I'm a little uh, disturbed when people say that because they discount the other half of the patients I see, which uh, in includes people who were clearly just not born to run. And there are a bunch of reasons why you could be not born to run. I, uh, I, I personally was not born to run. I have a bone that sticks out of the bottom of my foot. In every other way, I'm a runner. I'm, I'm built like a runner. I'm perfect for running. But with that bone sticking out of the bottom of my foot, I can't even walk across a hardwood floor without my bone breaking. So I run now and I can run as far as I want and, and, and I've been known to run fast sometimes, uh, but it's because of orthotics and it's because of shoes that cushion and, and make my foot a more uniform surface as it hits the ground. I've tried running barefoot, there's no way. I mean, I, I just, I'm not born to run. So it, it, it uh, invalidates me when you say we were all born to run. And there's people with bigger issues than mine, right? I mean, I see, see patients with club feet. There are, there are piece, piece, patients with extra toes, not as many toes. There's, there's all kinds of problems. Uh, from a mechanical standpoint, there are medical limitations. Maybe they're a diabetic. Maybe they have a, a hypothyroid. Maybe they have a, a, some sort of a glandular disorder. There are genetic predispositions. Some people, uh, their cartilage breaks down more easily than others. Some people, their tendons are looser. There's a ligamentous laxity, doesn't provide the support. There are a lot of things. There are uh, psychological factors, an inability to disengage, right? Uh, the, the person can't run because they can't disengage from something else, or they can't stop running because they can't disengage from running. So there are a lot of things that play into the born to run thing, but the fact is we weren't all born to run. The truth is we were all born to die at some point uh, miserably, and most of us were born to die earlier than we will, would have had we not born, been born in such a nice time when there are contact lenses and antibiotics and shoes and clothes and all kinds of other things that make life a little easier on us. So we're, we're weakening the gene pool, but all surviving. And, and I'll, I'll soften that a little bit for you a, a little bit later. So a couple other things. Were we born to run here? I, I do believe that, that there's that small population that was born to run. Completely genetically perfect, predispositions out the window, great biomechanics, boom, you're born to run, right? Well, they're born in America. There was a good study done in India that compared the shod versus unshod, meaning the kids that wore shoes versus the kids that didn't wear shoes in India. And it found, and it compared different age groups, it found the kids that, that wore shoes from the ages of zero to six had a four times greater incidence of flat foot than the kids that didn't wear shoes. And, and the theory is that the kids that didn't wear shoes got more uh, used to scrunching their toes and did more of that and had to grasp the ground and walk in the dirt in ways that the other kids with shoes on didn't have to do because we got a nice grippy surface and, and uh, there are a lot of things that make it easier for us. The arch musculature didn't develop, that's the theory, and uh, the, the incidence of flat foot was, was higher. Great study, really controlled a lot of the variables, and was, was uh, not even close in terms of the incidence of flat foot. So if you were born in America and, uh, or in any industrialized society and your kids wore shoes from zero to six, probably not the right thing to do. So uh, a good piece of advice that I give to all parents is to keep them, keep them out of their shoes. Now, I had two kids, and they wore shoes, and they even wore shoes that light up, right? Uh, the little ones that when they stamp on them, they light up, and they're the worst for you. But, but you know, you, you, you got to do what you got to do and uh, you got to get out of target somehow. So, but if you can keep your kids barefoot, that's best for you. Flat surfaces. It's unbelievable. Our impact on the world is unbelievable in a bunch of ways, right? And you can look at a, a bunch of things. But people don't often think about this. If you think about how you walk around all day, you walk around on completely flat surfaces. I'm walking on a completely flat stage. I go home, my house is flat, my office is flat, the sidewalk's flat, the road's flat. I never walk on natural surfaces. We weren't meant to walk on flat surfaces. Your arch was meant to touch the ground as the, the harder heel and ball of the foot sunk into the grass or dirt or sand or wherever you're walking and you had complete contact with the ground. 
there are four times as many nerves in the toes. Your foot is your major contact with the ground the majority of the time as you walk around on the earth. It's meant to be in contact with the ground, and I think if it doesn't contact the ground in the way it was meant to be, you have less information about the world you live in. So we all walk in an unnatural situation on flat surfaces where our arch is up off the ground, and I think that can, can play a major role. Uh, other things, you're born in America, there's an abundance of food. Your foot is the same whether you weigh 300 pounds or 150 pounds. It's the same foot. And so I see a fair number of 300-pound uh, patients with foot problems, right? Uh, that, that makes a big difference. Let's talk about some other things. Um, biomechanics. A lot, of, uh, a lot of military literature because they're, they're looking at humans as, as products. And they want to know how can they keep these kids from breaking down. Have found that that as your mechanics deviate from neutral, and I'm talking about foot mechanics here. I'm a, a foot doctor, so I tend to focus on that. But as your foot mechanics deviate from neutral, high arched or cavus feet versus uh, neutral feet versus super flat feet, injury rates increase. Okay, and it only makes sense that the laws of mechanics apply to the human body as as well as to everything else. biomechanics and injuries that create differences in your mechanics. So if you, if you played football and you tear the meniscus in your knee or you tear your ACL, that joint is at increased risk for arthritis. So as your mechanics change from neutral and normal to, uh, to high arched or flat and abnormal, as your mechanics change, injury rates increase. Good studies on runners have shown that running doesn't increase injury rates unless you have some sort of biomechanical abnormality, okay? The vast majority of us have a biomechanical abnormality. So if your biomechanics are perfect, then running is not going to increase your injury rates, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a, in a minute. 